What's up everyone, my name is Nagark. Welcome to Armello. This is a fairy tale based uh like board game RPG strategy game. It's really cool. I played through this through the tutorial, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to play through the tutorial again and record it so you can see what's happening in the game. There's actually a lot to cover, and I think that having the tutorial is very helpful. So, wait, no, prologue, no, no, tutorial, yes, this is the tutorial, oh, there's some sound issues there. So basically we start with a wolf's hunt, in the main story you learn the basics of movement and combat. I'm going to try to blast through a lot of this, it might have to be two videos, but I'm really hoping to get it, get it all done in one, but I'm a huge fan of strategy games. And I, I don't often play... This is all just story stuff. Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. I really want to share the mechanics of the game. So in a future video, when I do an actual game, you understand what the hell is happening. Hi Dane, hi. Did the dead mother tell you about me? Did she? I know she did. I see her letter. Let's go, yay. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of stats. And some health up there. Your first quest is at South Bank. Journey there by traveling from tile to tile. Believe we can move three tiles. Action points, three action points. You have three per turn. Use them to move between tiles. Uh, try to get there within two turns. Click to continue. So, uh, by selecting an adjacent tile. There we go. That takes one action point, and we move one tile. Mountains cost two uh, action points to enter, but they give you a defensive bonus. So, takes two of my action points, but we get a defensive bonus while we're in the mountains. Pretty simple. And then we end our turn. And then it's nighttime. So the turns are day-night cycle. Some of these guards are going to move. And then it's our turn again. Uh, it's your body. It represents your maximum health. So I have four out of four health. If you lose all of your health, you will die and be returned to your clan grounds, which is this place that we started in. So let's move on over. Uh, forest provides stealth at night. Stealth heroes cannot be seen. Alright. And then we go into the place. Walking onto a settlement brings it under your control. Each settlement you control provides one gold income at dawn. So at night we get one gold for each settlement that we've stepped on. A robed figure bursts from South Bank's gate. They hold a bloody knife. A squire is in pursuit. Thane, stop him, she cries. That's our first quest. In quest, you choose between a dangerous option for a bonus reward or playing it safe. So I can either do the dangerous option or the safe option. And let's see. This quest dangerous option tests your body stat. So for each body I have, I get a 10% bonus to the success rate. And if I complete the quest, I will get plus one body, plus one, I believe that's um, reputation prestige right and I will also get a squire which is a little card thing and if I fail I will lose two health so if I didn't do the um, the challenging one I would just get the the body and the prestige so we're gonna do this it's gonna bring up all of these <clears throat> those are the failures blues are the successes and it just picks it uh, you step before the figure and block their clumsy strike. You grab their pack before they flee. A journal of scribbled notes tumbles out. Sweet. Uh, I got a body, I got a prestige, and I got that squire card. If only you'd got here sooner, that beast attacked while we waited for you. He killed my master. Misery, tragedy, whoa, how can we go on? Uh, don't charge much. This guy comes in handy then. You've got the gold, so cough up. This is how much gold we have. We have seven gold. And you can see, oh, if it's going to do this. He costs two gold to hire, doesn't cost any uh, upkeep, I don't think any cards do, but if killed in battle, the squire takes the hits and instead dies. So if I die in a battle, he dies instead. So there we go. Uh, sleep, blah blah blah, and then we also have the explorer. Find more gold and magic when you explore. That's, that's what that other card was. So we don't have any more AP, switch it on over today. The guards are going to move again. Uh, you earn gold income from your clan and settlements every dawn. And 
Oh, right, not every night. I, I said that wrong earlier, sorry. The denizens of Armello will provide you with rumors. Often you will be able to choose between several of them. Uh, this rumor will lead to a quest with the treasure, Poppet, as the reward. What is Poppet? No, it doesn't, doesn't let me mouse over it. This is your fight. It represents your prowess in battle. This quest will test your fight, so I will have a 50% chance of success on this thing. So we pick the quest and it throws the quest wherever it goes. I've gathered up some of my master's supplies. I'm sure he'd want you to have them for a price. You should equip that sword and shield. They'll sure come in handy when we're done. So you can see the shield costs two and the sword costs two. And the sword gives me plus one sword in battle and plus the shield gives me plus one shield in battle. That'll come up in probably just a second. Walking into a swamp, you take one damage. And walking into one of these uh, shrines, the stone circles, gives you plus one health whenever you enter them. The circle is cluttered with symbols of dark power in the center, frantically packaging... Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's just telling me this is your chance and all of that. And what the cost of failure is. After battle, if you survive, your opponent suffers minus two health. That's actually really good. Uh, he spots you, then sprints for the trees in the circle's edge. So we have a 50% chance, so I'm just gonna try to give chase. No matter what, I still get the, um... The fight. And the prestige. You go down on all fours, racing across the circle. At the last moment, the figure spins and slashes you across the face. You howl and he escapes. He got away and he took the poppet with him. I'll... I'll be honest, I'm glad we didn't find it. I don't want anything to do with the rot. Let's set up camp. We can start trying to track him down tomorrow. And end turn. And now it is night time. And we're being attacked. So the sword and shield are going to come into come into play here. So because of my equipment, I automatically have Remember, fight each point in it grants a dice in battle. So we got six dice. Dice and Armello have six unique side symbols. One is attack, one is defense. Suns are attacks during the day and misses at night. Moons are the opposite, are misses during the day and attacks at night. And wild rolls count as a hit, then explode, granting a bonus dice. Finally, a rot is a miss. These are your opponent's stats. They work in the same way as yours, so he gets four dice. At the start of the battle, both combatants show their relevant items, followers, and abilities while their dice are locked in. The Wolf Clan's affinity is the Knight. They get plus one dice when facing challenges at night, so I get one more dice. And because of our sword and shield, we get one attack and one defense automatically. The guy has a Halberd, which reduces my dice by one, so I take away a dice. And now we roll our dice. Yeah! Let's see how this goes. Good amount of attack. Oh, look at that. We did some damage to him, and we blocked all of his damage. And that's that's the combat. He took three, I took nothing. He has two health left. King's Guard? Yep, he's gonna attack me too. So now it's gonna probably go through all of this a lot faster than it did last time. Yep, give me that, give me all of that. Okay, he took away one of my dice. And that's usually how, that's how combat actually goes, is it'll take all of it away. Or it'll calculate everything first for you and then just play it. So I took two, he took I think one, yeah. And because he attacked and I lost, then we got pushed around. And I'm also wanted by the King's Guard because they think that I have a poppet. And now that moves on to the second tutorial. Also. I'll probably decide afterwards if I'm gonna split it into two parts or keep it as one big part. So if I don't have an intro and an outro for the first and second parts, that's why. Now we move on to the rat. Probably my favorite character so far. Yep, this is re this is showing off what just happened. Because we're coming from a different character's perspective. Mm-hmm. Bane's turn. Yep. Okay, Mercurio. 
We need more story. Let's let's go. This time is money. Okay, so remember to equip useful items. They will help you on your journey. So it's, it's obviously showing me the adventurer's kit. In perils, you get plus one bonus die. We also have a trader card. Oh, I'll get to that in a second. Disguise as a trickery card. These cards contain political plays, agents, traps, ruses, and more. So grant stealth on every tile until end of target's next turn. So I can play this on myself, and every tile I'm in will be stealth. That costs four gold. But I guess it really wants me to play that. Uh, now we're going to pick a quest, which there's only one. This is your wits. It determines how many cards you can hold in your hand. So I can hold five cards in my hand. And this challenge, this quest is a witch challenge. If I get it, I get reveal all heroes quests. It's pretty sweet. And my quest is over there. Now our trader, plus two gold every dusk. Alright, uh, minus one gold if target can't pay, minus one health and minus one action point, grant scout from this location, and force king's guard off of a tile. Pretty neat. So we're going to head on over here. I don't want to go into the swamp. Wait, I don't want to stop and rest without knowing where Dane is lurking. Here, use this gold to hire rangers. Scout. Out, scout around Duncastle, that's where he was last seen, which is right over here, right? Oh, over here. Rangers! Uh, get, grant scout from this location until end of target's next turn. So, every tile around it, I can see. Eagle flag indicates scouted tiles, scouting reveals stealth creatures. Pretty sweet. And end our turn. Death to the traitor. So they are hunting down Thane. Oh. Punching him. Another one hit point lost. The settlement of South Bank is in lockdown by order of the king. We're looking for accomplices. Well, that's inconvenient. Now he's getting in the mountains for his defensive bonus. Uh, Dane has played a trickery card to this settlement as Peril. A Peril is a trap. Enter the tile and you'll face its challenge. Fail and you'll trigger the card's effect. In Spruce Vale, what is Dane up to? Okay. And I, I draw cards. That comes up in a later tutorial. No matter, forget the Peril. Dane is exposed. Let's claim that bounty. This is your prestige. It ref reflects your renown in the realm. We'll gain prestige in the kingdom by claiming a bounty on Thane's head. I know a few crooks who will be happy to do our dirty work. Killing another hero gives you plus one prestige. Claiming bounties awards you with a bonus, plus one prestige, and three gold. You can play cards to other creatures just like you played Disguise on yourself. So crooks, minus one gold if the target can't pay, minus one health, and minus one action point. And he's dead. I got two prestige and three gold. Nice. Uh, now let's deal with the spy master. We'll need to lift the lockdown. Don't attack the king's guard. We'll end up with a bounty too. So if you attack the king's guard, you get a bounty. Instead, let's organize some false orders. The, that bounty got you some prestige, which will let us contact some serious underworld figures. So this is our prestige. Not all cards cost gold. Some will cost prestige. False orders. Force a king's guard off of a tile for one prestige. Get off of there. Now, we can come in here. The city is bustling, you enter the tavern and glance around, there are many faces but none you've seen before, no spy master. So we do our 50% chance. And we win. You pick an obscure song, one you'd know only if you were listening for it, it takes just a few notes before the spy master sits next to you. So we got the spy master. Information comes at a cost. Recruit the spy master, we'll give you, she will give you the ability to see other heroes quest locations. So for three gold, I'll take that. Oh, Thane's heading to the mountains. This could be, this could complicate things. Give me some time to speak to my contacts, rest a while. Mm -hmm. And I can continue moving, correct? Oh, no, it just wants me to end my turn. I, I ran out of things. Ran out of APs. Oh, and there's Thane. He went back to his starting area. 
his clan grounds. He's heading towards the Winterhorn Mountains. When a hero dies, their turn ends, they lose one prestige, and return to their clan grounds. Um, yeah. So it's basically saying we're going to set up a trap for him on his way to his quest. Hire some mercenaries to lie in wait in Fleet Foot Hills. That'll cut him off from the mountains. Minus one action point and minus two health. Cost three gold. So on his way to the mountains, he's going to hit the peril. If he fails, he's going to take the damage and the AP. The spymaster has tracked the stolen rot tool to the Winterhorn Mountains. One of her sources in the city knows those peaks well. So this is going to be a 40% chance because of our body. And if we get it, we get a uh, minor. And of course, it takes me to the place with the peril. Here's a strategist card. Use it to help us get to Spruce Vale faster. Three gold gives us one action point. Is an instant trickery card. This is the card's effect. It costs three gold to play. And this is its Armello symbol. Yeah, okay. Our mellow symbols come up a little bit later. So we're going to increase my AP. So I have 4 AP. I can start getting to Spruce Vale even faster. There we go. Just avoid the mountains. Remember, we'll have to face Thane's Peril when we enter Spruce Vale, but there's no other option. Yep. This is a peril. Basically. This is the peril that Thane has played. You have a chance to avoid it. So, it cost him 4 gold to play it. If I fail, it steals one equipped item from me and takes it to him, and it has a peril rating of three, meaning there's three things that I have to match with my dice. Heroes use wits to counter trickery perils. Your wits determines how many dice you roll, so six dice against this. The Rat Clan's affinity in the night, they get plus one dice when facing challenges at night. And the Adventurer's Kit gives one bonus die in perils as well. Now I roll my dice and I hope. I have to match these three. Nope. I missed it by one. So he stole my adventurer's kit. I had my lunch in there. Uh huh. Claiming more than one settlement further increases your gold income and provides a gold discount to trickery cards. The city curfew is in effect at nightfall. The contact's house is across the street, but a king's guard is patrolling in front of it. Uh, we'll do the 40%. May as well. We did it! You're a shadow in the moonlight. He doesn't even see you sneak by close enough to touch. The contact, a miner, smiles and lets you in. We have information, now we plan our next move. In mountains, gain plus one gold and a bonus shield. That's pretty cool. Oh, I don't have the gold for that. I do not have the gold for that. And there's the king, the Lion King. Boom! Lightning strike right in his face. By the wild, that was a lightning strike spell. Why would the king attack the prince of the wolf clan? Quick, we need to report back. With the king acting so strange, we must tread very carefully. And that ends the second tutorial. Again, don't know if I'm cutting it in between these two. Probably gonna try to avoid it. So it might just be a long video full of tutorials. But... Again, I want people to have a chance to know the game. Traitor Spies, I have been lenient for too long. This is how I am repaid by the very clans I united. You forced me to take drastic measures. Mm -hmm. The king releases all of prisoners of the crown. New king's trickery perils appear across the kingdom. So, here come some perils. Oh boy. They're in just like random areas too. Four. Four trickeries. Here goes Thane, he's gonna do his thing. He's gonna hop in some mountains. There's Mercurio. I don't know why he got an extra fight and a prestige. Probably... Oh, that was his quest, I think. Yeah, he got his quest. Lady Emba! Okay, I know we're keen to go treasure hunting, but it looks like the plans might need to go on hold. But maybe we've got time to search a dungeon or two. It is your specialty. Your hero's power is shown on your hero's shelf. Higher chance of finding rewards when exploring. Sounds reasonable. You explore a dungeon by moving in onto it. Dungeons are full of dangers and rewards. 
will build influence by exploring and seeking out treasures and followers. Choose a quest. Okay. Living history. This is your spirit. It measures how attuned you are to the magical energies in our mellow. This is a spirit quest. Increasing your spirit will allow you to cast more powerful spells and increase your spell range. So, if I succeed, I get a bard. Plus one prestige when you successfully escape a peril. A bard, a chance at treasure, and probably danger as well. I might just stay outside if that's okay. I've heard that there's some strange old magic in, at work in there. Then again, you've got strange magic yourself. Uh, this is a spell card. Plus two spirit until the end of target's next turn. And it costs me three magic. Which is right there. This is magic. It's used to play spell cards and it is refilled every dusk. Your spirit determines how far you can play spell cards. You should focus your magic. It will help you in the quest ahead. Mm -hmm. So focus. So my spirit is up by two. So this quest, well, I'll have a 60% chance. And I have the gold in battle minus one die and plus two shields. So guaranteed two shields. And in battle, plus one sword. Not bad. So this should be a 60% chance of... Oh, this is the Explorer coin toss. It represents the chance of finding particular rewards or dangers. So I'm exploring. Good. We got some gold. And our thing is 60%, so we're gonna go for the 60% chance. I don't want to lose our prestige, but... Oh, we got it. Nice. Plus one prestige when you successfully escape a peril. I'm absolutely using that just because why not. End my turn, but I can still move. Whatever. Got my two gold for the night. Each dusk your magic is balanced to match your spirit. So because I have seven spirit, I get seven magic. That is a little bit hard for me to pay attention to. Oh, they're fighting. Nice. <clears throat> also again, sorry about my throat. Oh, he did his quest. Mercurio has the highest prestige of any hero. This makes him the prestige leader. That's actually really bad. Uh, choose a quest. Royal shield. In battle, suns and moons that miss count as shields. Ooh, that's really good. And that is a wits quest. All the way over there. Drawing cards! These are the three core decks of Armello. You may draw cards from any deck. The item deck contains weapons, armors, tools, and consumables to aid you on your journey. A trickery deck full of traps, ruses, and political maneuvers in the perfect deck to slow down... or is the perfect deck to slow down and undermine your opponents. The spell deck is your source of powerful spells, offensive and defensive busts and curses. Wits determines the number of cards you draw up to each turn. So I want some trickery. Mm hmm. Let's do another trickery. Both heroes gain plus one prestige per turn until either hero dies. Let's do a spell. Haste. One action point per tar target's next two turns. <clears throat> so this costs me three magic. So I can do that. Both heroes gain plus one prestige per turn until either hero dies. I'm actually going to play that. Actually, let me look. I, I, it's a tutorial and I don't have to do this, but I can, so I want to. If I click on Mercurio, he has three prestige. Okay, so. Both heroes gain plus one prestige per turn until either hero dies. I'm gonna play that on Vayne, so me and him start gaining it. And I can't actually do that. Okay, so sorry about that. I just really wanted to do the things. My next quest is all the way over there. Yeah. End turn. Hopefully the guard doesn't bother me. It's looking at our prestiges, and Mercurio is the highest. So, he has two cards here that he gets to pick from. Look, Mercurio has the king's ear. As prestige leader, he has a say in which laws the king enforces. We need more prestige than him to gain the prestige lead and reaffirm the rabbit clan's position. Slaying other heroes, completing quests, and playing trickery cards are a reliable way to gain prestige. 
this is your current prestige, you need to get more than Mercurio to become the new prestige leader. So he chose. Uh, the king orders his guards to march to their nearest settlement and terrorize them. So guards are just going to start going to settlements. Yep. Terrorized settlements lose their allegiances to any heroes or clan and won't generate any income. Re rescuing a terrorized settlement will restore peace and order earning... And restore earning... Oh, Jesus. Rescuing a terrorized settlement will restore peace and order, earning the hero plus one prestige. <clears throat> But we still don't want to fight the King's Guard because that puts a bounty on us. So he gained a, gained a prestige because of my spell, or my trickery. And they both killed each other, so they both lose a prestige. And that stops our little thing where I gain prestige every turn. Mm, let's do a spell. Yeah. And an item. Plus one shield. That's alright. Cost me three magic to do this. That's fine. I actually want... This. Nice. Very, very nice. I'm gonna take a hit from this, but that's okay. Because I have the AP to get here. The circle of battle has been drawn. The two champions are standing ready to attack. You shove through the crowd around them. Do I do I really want the royal shield? Can I risk the minus two health? I'm not gonna risk the minus two health. Because that would put me to one and I'm right by Mercurio, and that's all sorts of bad. He would probably try to attack me. So, the royal shield was not worth the risk, in my opinion. Okay. Mercurio's turn, where are you going? He claimed the settlement as his own, he just changed it from Dane's to his. And I will probably go and change it to mine. Now that you're the prestige leader, you just need to hang on to it until next dawn. Right. Uh, this is a spirit challenge. Helm of Heroes, that sounds kind of cool. And that is right there, that looks like a bad place to go. Let's get a spell. After battles, plus one health per wound inflicted until the end of target's next turn. That's pretty crazy. Force King's Guard off of a tile. Minus three health at one tile range, minus two health at two tiles range, minus one health beyond. Spirit range 5, peril rating 3, ooh. I can't play that here. Hmm. So let's steal his settlement. Hello. That's mine now. Deal with that, and... I can put- oh, I can't put on my shield now. Whoops, end turn. I should still be the prestige leader, though. Boom! I get to choose what the king does. The king's rotten choir sings. Minus one body to all heroes, banes, and king's guards across the whole kingdom permanently. That includes me. The king and the prestige leaders gain plus one health for enacting a mutual blood pact. I'll take that. So, I got an extra health. Yeah. Four. Four health. This can't be the same wise king who united the clans and ruled peacefully for a generation. I never thought I'd see the day there's nothing worse than madness. Wild save us from the king. And then we are on to the final tutorial. If you like bears, here's a bear. There's a bear. Promise. Bear, a bear's pilgrimage. So we're pretty much picking up where we were. A spirit stone has crystallized at bear's repose. It's just as I have foreseen guards find every spirit stone. Go now. 
Now from what I remember, this tutorial is actually really annoying. So, it may take a little bit of time. But, that's, that's part of what you get. Okay, he's doing his thing. He got a settlement. Mercurio. You're probably gonna get that settlement, yeah. What are you doing? You're fighting a peril. That didn't go well. Sana. Yes, Sister Sana. Sana, I'm coming to friend, long, long time friend. I won't leave you now. We are friends, right? I found this strange thing. It looks scary. What do you think it means? Plague. This is no ordinary spell card. This spell does not cost magic. Casting it will cause you to gain one rot. Uh, this is your rot level. Currently it is zero. Rot is a dark and powerful destructive force. It consumes living energy. When a hero gains their first point of rot, they are considered infected and will suffer minus one health every dawn. That sounds bad. Let's avoid the rot. Yeah. Uh, this is a body thing. And it gives a wildfire staff. That sounds good. And it's over there. In apparel. So in battle, when defending game, plus two swords. That sounds good to me. And this guy gives us plus two dice in perils. That's actually really good. Uh, plus one rot and target is poison. Yeah, I don't really want that. As we move, it's going to say, hey, there's a spirit stone. We should grab it. Keep it safe. Maybe play with it a bit. And to those that gather the stones, almighty shall come the ultimate power, wild and purity. That's what an old bear mumbled. His breath smelt of fish, so I didn't listen. So, we are going to get that. Take this, it might help you. I had it tucked away just in case it's a little grubby. All cards and targets hand change to shield symbols. Kind of interesting. Yes, can I touch it? And there's a peril there. So, this is where it's going to show us that we can burn cards, and these symbols start to matter. As well as playing or equipping cards, you are able to burn cards in perils or battle. So this thing has an armello symbol of shield. And down here, I need to get an attack, a shield, and a sun. So if I chuck a card in here, then it gives me that shield. Meaning that I have more chance with this to complete it. And also, this has like a timer, so... I don't really think I'm going to be using immolation, so I'd rather just be safe. Yeah, it doesn't look like I would have gotten a sun. Yeah, so... I really didn't want the minus three health. That's a big deal. And then we are going to come over here because we don't want to step in the swamp. You see that? I don't like it. I'm scared. Yeah, that was a, that was a creepy thing. Now everyone else is going to get their turn. Amber gets to do a declaration. Tax time. Decrees that taxes are due. Everyone pays the king two gold. Can't pay. Minus one prestige. So I gotta pay up my two gold. Can't use that. That also affects Amber, by the way. And you're not immune to whatever decrees you do, unless it specifically says so, and I don't know if there are any, if there is any that does that. Yeah, take that damage. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's getting a lot of gold because of all the settlements they're stepping on. Yep. Look at everyone getting those settlements. Why would you step into a swamp peril? Okay, she beat the peril. That was super risky. So let's see. I do have a good amount of spirit and magic, so I should probably... Teleport to target. Place palace tiles restricted. Oh, cool. And one more. Minus one rot and removes poison. Ooh, that's good. That means I can use the... The baddie bad. Journey to Castle Balerian. I'm here. Uh, that's really hard. Plus one rotten, plus one plague spell and target's hand. I don't think I can beat that, so I'm just gonna roll dice. And hope. No such luck. 
But I do have a cleansing wild, so I'm gonna actually get rid of the rot. You've been tainted with rot. Don't turn purple, please. And this is our adventuring thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A monster attacked us. What is that thing? Banes are corrupted creatures born of the rot. Any creature they kill, they infect with plus one rot. So your rot doesn't go away when you die. Sana's hero power uses her high spirit to battle corrupted creatures instead of her fight. I'm fighting a corrupted creature. It didn't let me see it. Creatures with higher rot than their opponent will receive their opponent's rot as bonus dice in battle. So he gets one rot as as a bonus dice. Use spirit in place of fight. Oh, okay. Burn cards in battle to guarantee particular dice results. Ah, uh, no. And because I'm defending, I have plus two attack, I believe. Because of my staff. Look at that. That's some mean hitting. Blah, blah. Blah, blah. Totally smoked it. So I took two health, but I did kill the, the jerk. Which gave me a prestige. Pretty good. A bane, what horror? I never believed in the old bedtime stories, but they're real. Also, what I'm gonna do is use my three magic to get rid of that rot. I don't want that rot. That rot is bad. Taking one health every turn? Nuh uh. And we got some gold. Can I do anything with the gold? 50% uh, chance I would get minus two health, but plus one spirit when equipped grants plus two magic every dawn. That's a that's worth that's worth risk. Come on, yeah, nailed it. Well, I'm glad that's over. Let's get out of here. Yeah, tell me about it. I want that staff on. Give me, give me that staff. It doesn't cost anything, and I don't really want to move into either of the poopy zones. I don't really have the gold. I don't have any cards that even need gold. That's what I should say. Here we go. King is doing nasty things. Oh. It's not on top of the character. Sometimes I have to click their portrait to actually have it follow them. That little button up there does that to you. Oh no, Mercurio, what has he done? A hero becomes corrupted when they have five or more rot. Corrupted heroes still lose one health every dawn. Corrupted heroes gain dark powers, such as plus one health each time they kill another creature in battle. Corrupted creatures will be destroyed if they enter a sacred stone circle. That's pretty insane, so he doesn't really have a reliable way of healing either. But he is all sort of rotted out. They fought. That didn't go well for her. And she took on a peril after just fighting, so she dies, loses a prestige. Uh, the Mad King. Yeah. So it wants me to go into the King's territory. Okay, let's look at the prestiges really quick. We have two. Thane has two, Mercurio has three, Amber has seven. That's nuts. It, I, it obviously does not want me to be the prestige leader. Palace tiles restricted, so I can't just teleport my ass in there. There we go. Get in the mountains, get super defensive, and I think that's actually fine. Yeah, end turn. Because I wouldn't be able to reach it anyways. Look at that. That's seven prestige. That's nuts. The king's inquisitors hold inspections across the kingdom. Any hero with rot suffers minus one prestige. Not me. That's Mercurio, yo. That is not me. The guards are going. You might attack me. Nope. Did not attack me. Took over a settlement. That's good. For him. And he healed. Mercurio lost a prestige. That rotty bastard. 
Okay. Oh, Mercurius heading over to me. What is this? I don't want to fight him. Get off of me, Mercurio. I didn't get to draw cards. So let's see, does this say anything? Nope. Just says lose remaining AP. So, get our one health and then we're gonna go into the palace. Lock the palace down, none shall enter. We must protect the kingdom. Sound of the palace seems different. The defenses are up. Doesn't the king know we have a spirit stone? The palace gardens are protected by powerful palace perils that remain until defeated. Breaching the palace is difficult. Collect a good mix of cards in your hand and burn cards to improve your chances of success. So this is probably going to be a fail. This is actually something that I spent a lot of time trying to beat before. Come on, I just need two dice. I failed it like half a dozen times before I finally got it. Yep, I failed by one. Minus one health per unmatched symbol, hero is ejected from the palace. So I took one health and I'm ejected, but it ejected me onto the onto this, so I got the health back. Reaching the palace is a difficult task. Each attempt uses up all remaining AP and your turn to refill your AP. Yep. That's exactly how it goes. This tile has given me so much grief. It's a hard tile. Thane's made it easier for us to get into the palace. He must want to know what's happening to the king as much as we do. Mmm. Mmm. So instead of four, it's probably only three things. You have a king's bounty on your head for three gold and one prestige. Can only be cleared with the pardon or by death. Other heroes can claim your bounty. Yep. Pretty neat. How big does this get? Oh, that's cool. That is... Oh, and it even goes down. Like, it can retract. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I love that. And it, you can mouse over and see information. Oh my god, you have my heart. You have my heart, Armello. So I want a good mix of cards. So this is an attack. This is a tree. Plus two health per turn for targets next two turns. He, they said they made it easier, and I can't see what, um, what the challenges are going to be. So let's see, tree, that's all I got is the one tree. Come on. Come on. Moot, yeah! I beat it. I was way faster than the first time I went through this. Uh, I can risk. I can risk the 60%. I'm just gonna let you know that it fails. I, I did this before, it fails. Yep. You hesitate, then hand over the stone. They seize it behind you, a rumbling voice chills you your bones. Lock it in the dungeon, the king. That's our spirit stone, not yours. The king and his guards aren't trying to stop the rot, they're leading us to disaster. We can't let you leave, sister. If you come to the dungeons willingly, your death will be quick. No, Sana, save me, I'm too hilarious to die. Wait, quick, cash banish on yourself, we can escape before it's too late. Teleport to furthest dungeon. Why don't I just use the teleport card that I have? Oh, I don't have it anymore. Uh, in battle, stun, suns and moons miss. That miss count as shields. There we go. There we go. So he's angry. Think the wild just in time. I can't believe it. Our king has been taken by the rot. It's clear now that the king's days are numbered, but who's going to rule our mellow? As the current prestige leader, Amber has been playing this political game. If the King's Rot consumes his life while Amber is the prestige leader, she will achieve a prestige victory and claim the throne. Dane is heading towards a Kingslayer victory. He will need to breach the palace and attack the King directly. If Dane defeats the King in battle without dying, he'll be named King of Armello. Mercurio is trying to get his Rot higher than the King's. If he attacks the King with a higher Rot value and slays him, Mercurio will become the new Lord of Corruption. To achieve a spirit stone victory, heroes first need to collect four spirit stones. With the stones, they must breach the palace and confront the king, cleansing the kingdom of rot. So let's return and talk with the fish breath bearers. They'll know what to do. So those are the different win conditions of the game. And this is, like I said, this is just the video that I really wanted to do so that you understood the game 
And I think hopping into a game without seeing these tutorials would just be nuts, because there are so many stats and so many things to follow through with, and even like just heroes, people that you can choose. There's more than the four. They give you eight to choose from right away, and it's like super cool. So next video, this will probably be like a tutorial point five video, and then next video will be a first part of a series. Hopefully, I don't know how long the games go. I don't know how long the games go, so I'm gonna have to figure it out. Um, but I'm gonna be playing through at least one game because Armello looks like so much fun. My name's Nagark, and thank you for watching.